and welcome back to the Balance Bond Podcast, Soul on Fire. I'm your host, Jordan Younger, and I am consciously saying my intro differently this week because (laughs) my husband was making fun of me the other night for starting every single episode by saying, hello, my loves, this is Jordan Younger. So for the next few weeks, I'm going to play around with all the different things. Like, hi, hello, what's up, everybody? And it's just so funny because I'm just here talking into a microphone and (laughs) I'm just envisioning all of you on the other side of the screen right now. And I'm so happy that you're here and I'm so happy that you are listening to the show. This podcast is so special to me. And as I was saying to today's guest, Annie Lawless, This podcast is very different from a lot of other podcasts in that I only have people on the show who I know personally, who I have a close relationship with, who have really influenced my life in some form or another. And Annie is one of those people. As you'll hear about in this episode, Annie and I met in, I believe it was 2014. I had been blogging for a couple of years and she had started Suja, the juice company with her co-founder, Eric, in 2012. So I knew who she was. I was a huge fan of the juice brand, Suja, which was already in Whole Foods. And back then, it was such a novelty to be able to buy cold pressed juice at a grocery store. It was basically just unheard of back then. And it was an amazing new option for people, especially people like myself who had been obsessed with health and wellness and juicing for so long. So Annie and I met, we were connected through a mutual friend. We went to dinner at Katsuya, which we talk about in this episode, and we shut the restaurant down. We were talking all night. We connected on so many different things, so many different levels. And from there, Annie has just been such an inspiration. We remain friends and she has gone on to do incredible things in the health and wellness space as well as in the clean beauty space. I'm sure many of you know that Suja was acquired in part by Coca-Cola, which is the dream for many, many juice brands and any beverage vertical, really. She ended up going a separate way and then starting her own clean, non-toxic makeup brand called Lawless. And I'm sure many of you have heard of it. It is exclusive to Sephora. And there's an incredible story there that I will let Annie talk about in this episode. And it was just so fun to talk to her and to catch up and hear all about her life as a mom. She has a baby girl named Daisy. She got married a few years ago and she really juggles it all. From being a mom and a wife and a business owner and just this serial entrepreneur and creative who truly loves the creative process, she has so many tips for founders and people starting a business. And I'm just amazed because she has always really been in the right place at the right time, which as we talk about in this episode, is truly a product of being in alignment with what you love, doing what you love, following your heart, even when it feels crazy or might sound crazy to certain people. So I know you guys will be inspired by this episode. We also talk about the OG days of blogging because we, I mean, that's really why we met and we were some OG bloggers. We did all the posts. We did what I eat in a day, the travel posts, the fashion posts, the breaking down health and nutrition. And this was pre-influencer days. I always miss the blogging pre-influencer days. So if you think Annie should bring back her blog, you have to tell us. And I really, really want to commit to posting more often on the Balance Blonde blog too. Because ever since I started this podcast four and a half years ago and started doing so many things and I kind of use Instagram as a blog these days, I just don't update the blog as much as I want to. But it's a passion and I think we got to bring it back. This conversation definitely inspired me. So I know you're going to love it and I cannot wait to hear all your thoughts. If you feel inspired to rate and review the podcast on iTunes, I would love if you would take the time to do that and I can send you my free Soul on Fire yoga ebook as a thank you when you email me a screenshot of your rating and review to jordan at thebalancebond.com. And we are still doing a big wellness giveaway each week to people who rate and review the show. And in that box, you will get a box of Cured Nutrition CBD, Liquid IV, Healthy Hydration Supplements, Go Macro, Vegan Bars, and Drink Olipop Healthy Soda. So don't sleep on that. It is a very, very fun giveaway. Also follow TBB Podcast on Instagram to enter to win. 
And before we dive into this episode with Annie, I would love to thank our sponsor for today's show, Cured Nutrition. So I'm sure many of you know at this point that Cured Nutrition is the CBD brand that I swear by. This is the only CBD that I take. I love everything about it. I love the way it makes me feel. I love how much I can trust this brand to always be pure and potent. And I love the founder, Joseph Sheehy. You guys know that. He's been on the podcast. If you want to listen and learn more in that episode, we talk all about why CBD is amazing for you. So a question that everybody always asks me is, does CBD get you high? So no, CBD alone doesn't get you high and Cured Nutrition's products do not get you high. They're CBD-infused products that are engineered to take your life to its ultimate potential. So whether you're looking to be more alert, have an extra pep in your step, have a little bit more energy, or to just get better sleep, which is one of my favorite things to use CBD for, or maybe you have a lot of pain, then you would be geared to use it for pain relief. There's so many amazing things that CBD helps with. So when you're shopping on their website, you can shop by Perform, Balance, Recover. You can also shop by Pets, which is so fun. You know, I'm all about my cat Hudson and he loves CBD. And you can also shop by Bundle. So if you're looking for something to take every day, you can do the Daily Dose Bundle, Relief Bundle for pain relief. There's a Sleep Bundle. My personal favorites at the moment are the Mint Tincture, the CBD Pain Salve, which is so amazing. It's full of shea butter. It smells delicious and it really works. And I also love the Zen for sleep. And what I love about the Zen and why it helps me sleep so much is because not only is it CBD, but there's also adaptogens in it. So between the two, you are definitely pretty much guaranteed to relax and get a really beautiful good night's sleep. They use some of my favorite herbs and adaptogens like valerian root, reishi, passion flower, ashwagandha, magnesium, so many things that encourage a good night's sleep. Or if you're looking for more of a morning product for more alertness, I love Cured's Rise product. And I also love their Aura product, which is really good for the gut and digestion. And I also find that it helps me feel really alert. So I know that you will love all these products. You can go to curednutrition.com slash blonde to shop everything at a 15% off discount. And you can also use that code blonde, B-L-O-N-D-E at checkout for that discount at any time. I know you will love them and I'm so excited to hear more of your thoughts. So tag me on Instagram if and when you try. And now let's head into this episode with the wonderful Annie Lawless. Well, I'm so happy that you're here, Annie. It's so good to see your beautiful face. The Thank first you. First time chatting with you since you're a mom. So let's open up by just kind of talking about that. And then I want to go back in the history of your life. But first, just tell us what is it like to be a mom to your beautiful Daisy? Thank you. Um, yeah, it's amazing. I, like I told you, I was so not prepared to find out I was pregnant and I've been married for three years, but I really still hadn't hit a point where I was sure I wanted kids or felt like it was a good time in my life that I was finished, you know, having my freedom and my independence. And it really was a tough time for me. And this was last December when things were just starting to come up about COVID. I don't think we knew quite yet how bad it was going to become, but those first three months of being pregnant between like December through February was probably one of the hardest times I've experienced in my life because I just felt so out of control of the direction of my life. I hadn't chosen this. I had so much fear and concerns. The world was in a really crazy state. So I didn't feel like I had my normal support system and wasn't able to see people. And it was really tough. And I think that in some ways the pandemic was like the best thing that could have happened during my pregnancy, because it really forced me to like power down at home and come back to the simple pleasures of life of like family and, you know, going on long walks at night. And I really talked to my husband during this time about like, you know, what our family would look like. And I guess we're doing this. And it really helped me to appreciate family and that like connection and closeness once all of the dust kind of settled. And I realized that we were going to be home for the duration of my pregnancy. 
And it just cleared out all of the distractions I was used to of events and, you know, work and travel and all these things. And without that, I realized I love being home and I I do want a family and I do want to be a mom. And this is what matters. So it's been an amazing evolution. And I think where I was last year, this time to now, and just having her smiling little face looking up at me, it's just the best thing ever. I love hearing that story. I mean, it's amazing because you really didn't know if you wanted to be a mom and you're a stepmom. And it's so clear, even from just all your photos with Daisy and the videos that you just live for her and she's taught you so much. It makes me so happy. Thank you. She's definitely... Kids are almost like a little mirror. They definitely reflect it back onto you. what, What you are projecting onto them. And I realized, you know, I want to be the kind of mom that I would want to have as a child myself. Like I want to be the best mom I can be. And so the minute I saw her face, um, the day she was born, it was like, that was it. That's my life journey now. All I want to do is be the best mom I can. That's so beautiful. Wow. Okay. So that's a good segue then to your childhood. What was your childhood like and your relationship with your parents and What did you want to be when you grew up? All those fun things. (laughs) Well, I had a really interesting childhood because for the first like 11 years, my parents were married and then they got divorced, which felt very abrupt to us. I don't think at that age, I really knew that there was a possibility that that was happening. Um, It just kind of came out of nowhere. And it really did feel like overnight, my family just kind of like fell apart. And um, my mom went back to work full time my relationship with my dad definitely started to feel very strained. And we definitely lost a connection and closeness that we had. And I, I really became independent as a coping mechanism. And I think that when I still am that way, but when things kind of around me are falling apart, I just go inward and focus on myself. And I kind of don't, don't want to rely on other people because I just feel like I'm the only person I can count on. And I think that was the first real time that I was like, okay, you know what? Uh, this stuff going on with my parents is crazy. I'm just going to get the best grades I can. I'm going to go to school, study what I want. And then I'm going to go move away. And I'm just going to, you know, I was like, that was my coping mechanism was to just kind of go inward. And I was, I was a middle child. So I was already like very independent, but that really was like a defining point in my childhood. I think when my parents got divorced, it was like a huge reason why I chose the career path that I did in an entrepreneurial Um, direction because I like having control of my situations and being able to call the shots and not having to be at the whim of someone else. And so um, that was, that was definitely tricky, but I'm very close. I have two siblings and that really made me close, especially with my younger brother, because I felt responsible for him Um, when my family dynamic shifted so painfully, it was like, okay, well, I'm going to look out for him because my mom's not around because she's working. My dad's not around because he's out of the house. And so now that I'm out of it, I can see so many silver linings about the way that I am as an adult because I went through such a tough experience as a child and felt like I had to rely on myself. That was a tough time for sure. I didn't have the most um, easy childhood. That's that's for sure. Yeah. I know it's wild looking back and seeing all the ways that our childhood really reflects in our adulthood and some of the hardest things we've been through end up like, oh, wow, that's why you're such a badass business owner and why you've started multiple businesses, but it's hard. I mean, I definitely relate to some of that. It's really hard. It's really hard. I'm grateful though. I'm really grateful. I think like I, I got a lot of my independence and ambition because of that. And we were just talking, but hard times really do make you stronger and they really do force you to step up to the plate and like take action and like get shit done and fix things and, you know, do kind of forge your own path. And I think that's really, I'm grateful for that. I think that it all happened for that reason. To, it's all part of like my journey in this life. Yeah, I totally agree. So then also when you were a teenager, you found out that you had an autoimmune condition. Mm-hmm. How old were you when you... I was 12. Oh. Um, and I had suffered from eczema like my entire life. So I had it all over my arms, legs, and I was using steroid creams just to manage it. And I remember like, that was just part of my life. Every pediatrician that I ever saw just said that I, I just was born with it. There was really no explanation. 
And sort of like early adolescence was when I was starting to feel pretty embarrassed about it because you start worrying about your skin and how you look. And, you know, I was really um, embarrassed by it. And so when my parents got divorced, I switched to a new doctor and that pediatrician said, you know, you're really old to be having this chronic of eczema. Most babies and toddlers grow out of it. We should do an autoimmune panel because eczema is autoimmune and there could be some tie with another, you know, immune response. So it turned out that I had celiac disease and I had never even heard the word. I didn't even know what gluten was. And at that time there wasn't even like whole foods. Mm -hmm. It's so embarrassing to say because it makes me realize how much time has passed, but (laughs) I'm 33 now. So that was 21 years ago. Wow. The health and wellness movement and culture just didn't exist. So it wasn't like you could go to the store and buy gluten-free products. Um, And I was raised like every other kid on a standard American diet of like pizza, pasta, toast, you know, waffles, all of those kind of things. So it was really a challenging time to basically overhaul my entire diet. But when I did and followed this doctor approved food list, my eczema completely went away. And this was in like two weeks. Wow. And that was like the first real um, light bulb moment for me that there's a huge correlation between what we consume, whether it's food, media, you know, beauty products, home products, everything that we consume, there's a correlation with how we look and feel and like what it does to us. And so that really sparked my fascination for health and wellness. And I just got obsessed with learning about nutrition. And that was how I got into juicing because I learned about the healing power of juice and kind of flooding your body with all these easily digestible nutrients. And that was a really great thing that happened to me again, just like my parents' divorce, you know, finding out these things that are a really tough time in your life do have gifts. And I think for me, it just really revealed to me my passion for health and wellness. Mm-hmm. I know. I always feel like those of us who have been through health issues have been given the gift of finding health and wellness, specifically yeah. at such a young age for you. And I've totally been through the same thing with the eczema. First when I was young, but then more recently when I had full body hives like three years ago and every single dermatologist said, oh, it's just eczema. There's just a steroid cream for that. And I was like, no, there's something (laughs) something wrong. wrong happening from the inside out. And what's incredible is that it led you to juicing and Mm -hmm. that led you to starting eventually starting Suja. Mm -hmm. So in between those things, you went to law school. And- yeah. So I went to law school. Um, I'm from Arizona originally. And I moved to law school in San Diego, which is where I currently still live. But I had done philosophy as my bachelor's in undergrad. And I really loved studying philosophy and like pondering the meaning of life and, you know, going deeper into like human emotion And I thought law would be a great segue because most of the people in my program were either going into law or teaching. And I didn't really know what to do with a philosophy degree, but I had studied a lot of ethics. I got a certificate in ethics and I thought ethics is a great way to apply philosophy to law. And so when I started law school, I realized within like the first month that I hated it. I was like, this is not for me. I do not want to be a lawyer. Like it's nothing like I thought it was going to be. I'm not passionate about this. And I became really depressed. And that was like the first time in my life, I think I felt like truly depressed where I would wake up knowing I had classes all day and I just dreaded my life, dreaded my days. And I just felt so stuck. And my dad's an attorney. I knew that I would be really disappointing my parents. I didn't have a plan B or know what I would do if I left law school. And I just felt really kind of hopeless. And so... And as kind of an outlet and a way to meet people outside of school, I started going to this yoga studio. And then I did a teacher training and I connected with a lot of people in that community. And then I started working there. And um, during that time is when I met my business partner in Suja, Eric. And this was before it was Suja, um, but he ended up being my boyfriend. And we both have this huge fascination for health and wellness and juicing. And he had the same cold press that I did, which was the Norwalk press. I'm sure you know well, but it was created by Dr. Norman Walker, really like the first pioneer of cold pressing juice. And so we just like had this major connection over our shared interest for health and wellness and juicing. So we started to do a local home delivery service throughout San Diego. And at the time it was called Elevated Nutrients. And we would just have people text us their orders every Sunday. And for fun together, he and I would juice all of these orders, put them in these glass bottles and deliver them. 
And so that was really the beginning of Suja before we ever had an intention to launch in like a retailer like Whole Foods or make it, you know, a nationally distributed brand. It was really just a fun local kind of hobby for us and home delivery service. And then quickly it escalated. A lot of people got interested. It kind of got this little local cult following. And then a couple of guys wanted to invest. We got a space and it really started to legitimize and become a real brand. Um, And then we obviously changed the name to Suja and we launched it in Whole Foods just a year or two later after we started the home delivery service. That all happened so fast. I know. Do you just think about that and think, Oh my God, it was like right place, right time, really took off just basically in the span of a year without, I feel like without the intentions of, of it becoming what it is today, which I think is so incredible. Totally. Well, I think that shows the power too, of like aligning with your purpose and like when you do what you're called to do and don't, you know, it's, it almost does like fall into place that it it feels very right place, right time, because you're living in alignment with like why you're here and what you're supposed to be doing. And I think for me, that was really like, that was what saved me during this time of law school. When I felt so depressed, I left out the part that I dropped out. So I dropped out and I did tell my parents. And that's when I was really teaching yoga a lot and just trying to find my way and what I was going to do. And I just knew that it felt good to juice and do what I was passionate about and work on this little business um, with, at the time, my boyfriend, but who's still a great friend. And just, we, we were so passionate about it. And I think that was really the key was like, we just loved it so much. Mm-hmm. And I think that really came through. And that's why people really resonated with um, the brand and wanted wanted to help us grow it and wanted to be part of it and invest. And um, Whole Foods heard about it very quickly. And I think it all just really kind of snowballed. Mm-hmm. Totally, totally. I completely agree. It's because you were following your passion and your heart. It's just amazing to me. I mean, I love it because so many people I think are terrified to go off the beaten path or to leave grad school or, you know, we both dropped out of grad school, <laughs> you and I, and we would joke about that grad school dropout. Like <laughs> I know. We're like, oh, we're the grad school dropouts. And it's truly amazing. And I love the idea that that can work out for anybody as long as you're following your heart and your passion and believing in yourself. Totally. Well, it's so funny because a lot of times, like if I'm ever doing a panel or like some sort of business interview, people will think like, you know, the secrets of business or how to start a successful brand or like that you had a business plan. And I think that's really discouraging for a lot of people that have passions or dreams and they just don't know where to start. or They think that everybody else is smarter than them that has succeeded in that field. Mm -hmm. And that is so not true. Like that couldn't be further from the truth because... I was 23 when we started Suja. I had no idea what I was doing, no clue about anything. I made tons of mistakes, you know, had some partners I liked, some partners I didn't like, you know, I would do a million things differently when I think back to like what the smart business moves would be. But at the end of the day, like nobody really knows what they're doing. And I think the main key to starting uh, anything that you're really passionate about is just starting and doing it and asking questions and kind of going going with your heart. But, um, that I always say that to younger people when they ask like, Oh, how did you do this? Wow. Like I look up to you so much. And I'm like, you really shouldn't because I, I'm not smarter than you. I didn't have anything more than you do. It's really just a matter of like doing it or not. Right. I know. It's just a matter of just literally doing it, just starting and going after it. So what are some of the mistakes, if you're comfortable talking about some of the mistakes with Suja that you feel like you would do differently if you could go back in time? Yeah. Well, and it's funny because now I have a second brand and it's nice to have that experience because I can do things differently. But overall, it was a really positive, amazing experience. But I was young and I was very naive. And I think that was my biggest lesson is choosing your partners wisely, not letting anyone take advantage of you, making sure that you know when you have a business idea, there's really only one of you, but there's a lot of like money out there and investors. So like making sure that you still maintain the control of your brand and your vision, because that's really the magic of the business. It's not the money behind it. And so allowing an investor to get too much control uh, when really you're the one with like the heart and soul, I think is really important. But overall, I wouldn't change anything. I think my biggest kind of missteps were just 
being young and naive in business and not having gone through experiences of fundraising before and contracts and, you know, things like that. But you live and you learn. And now that I'm, you know, almost 10 years out of it, I think I look back on it as such a positive experience and positive time in my life. Right. No, totally. And so you did Suja for many years, got into Whole Foods. You wrote a book that did really well, all about juicing. That's pretty much how, how we met. Um, through how the, we met, like through the wellness circuit. I think like mm-hmm. you were just, well, no, you had definitely started like your blog. Your blog was actually really big at that time. I remember this was like back when I first started reading you, I think we met like maybe six months later, but I was just like so obsessed with your blog and your message and just like how obsessed with health and wellness you were, because there weren't many like people in our peer group and age range that were as Mm -hmm. obsessed with this kind of stuff as we were. And I remember we went, we met in LA and I just like loved you, but, um, yeah, we launched in Whole Foods and then uh, we started just in the Southern Pacific region, which is like San Diego, um, LA. And then we quickly went national and then we launched in Target and Costco. And then um, in 2015, we sold 30% to Coca-Cola and 20% to Goldman Sachs. And I stayed on for about six months. And then I really decided that it was like time. I just felt like I wanted to feel passionate about it again. And I wanted to start a project where I could pour my heart and soul into it. And I felt like it was Suja. Um, it was, it was just ready. I was ready. I think I had so much fun in the startup phase and building something and it was so challenging. And then the company was, was running smoothly and we had so many bigger teams of people involved and it just really evolved into something new. And I was, I was ready to get back to that like creation phase, Mm -hmm. like the beginning. So that was when I decided it was time to move on and do something new. Yeah. No, that's huge. I have so much to say about all of that stuff. First, I remember when we went to Katsuya in LA when we met and we talked for so many hours about juicing and health and just truly being so obsessed. I think we like were the last people out of restaurants multiple times. I think so too. I completely remember that. So many good, so many good conversations and just so much fun talking about this stuff because you're right. It was back at a time where it wasn't everywhere the way that it is now. And now wellness is like, oh, everybody talks about wellness, blah, blah. But truly, yes. We have been into this stuff for a really long time. And it does go back, I think, to our own journeys, our whole our own health issues that brought us to all this kind of stuff. And I remember when um when I first discovered you, I was living in New York, so obsessed with Suja. Suja was brand new. And seeing you on Instagram, juicing and just starting this juicing business with Eric. And I was like, (laughs) oh my God, this girl is like just everything. I love everything that they're doing. And it's been so incredible to watch you blossom then into your next phase of makeup, which has always been such a passion of yours beyond health. Mm -hmm. So tell us about that. Yeah. So, I mean, it's so funny because blogs like don't really exist anymore. Like nobody- I know, it's kind of sad. I but know. back when we had our blogs, um, I had mine. It was called Blonde at the time. I love <laughs> your blog. I wish you would still blog. It was so I'm funny. thinking about it. I'm like, I miss the old days of blogging and just so like do I. And writing and putting little pictures in. That was I know. so fun. But I like, that was really my creative space. And I wasn't doing it like, this was before like you were an influencer. That was like a job. It was just totally a hobby. And I would post so much about like, fashion and makeup and all my other passions, which was like beauty, health and wellness, fashion, recipes, travel. And I remember I was so getting into clean skincare because I was like, okay, Sephora, I think had just been starting to launch all these clean skincare brands like Tata Harper and Tatcha. And I was reading an article about clean skincare and I was like, I'm so into health and wellness, but I'm consuming all of these like toxic ingredients in my skincare products. I should definitely change that. So I decided to cut out all of my conventional skincare products and switch over to clean brands. And I did a blog post about that. And I was getting so many comments like, I love this content. I love this recommendations. What what are you doing with your makeup? Do you have any clean makeup recommendations? And I was like, I don't really. Like, I I don't even really use clean makeup. And I always kind of felt left out of the clean makeup world because it felt very no makeup makeup. And I'm like so unabashedly a full face of makeup kind of person. I love full coverage. I just love glam. That's 
I just love it. So I was like, okay, I'm going to try some clean skincare or clean makeup brands and see if I like anything and do a blog post guide of like my best in each category, because it seems so crazy to me that I'm spending more money and seeking out clean skincare, but then putting all those same ingredients I'm trying to avoid back on my face five minutes later with my makeup. Like that seems crazy. So I bought tons of clean makeup I could find. And this was like um, 2016. So this was like before now where there's so many more great products and brands, um, but it felt very minimal and the category was so small. So I bought a bunch of clean makeup and I tried a ton of it. And I was like, this is just not going to work for me. Like as a full face makeup kind of girl that was used to using brands like NARS and Bobbi Brown and Giorgio Armani, everything just felt like a sheer wash of color, tinted moisturizer, earth tone eye quads. Like I was looking for a real eyeshadow palette. I was looking for a full coverage foundation. I didn't want like a stick for my eyes, cheeks, and lip. I wanted a real blush, a real lip gloss, real lipstick. And so that was when I saw a big white space. And I was like, I care so much about ingredients, but I'm willing to put all of this crap on my face because I can't find clean makeup. That's my next project. I need to do clean makeup, for the makeup lover that's high performance and beautiful packaging that actually works, but you know, doesn't have like endocrine disruptors and toxic ingredients and talc and parabens and synthetic fragrance and all these things that I felt so strongly about keeping off my skin. So that was when I got the idea for Lawless and that was like t- early 2016. And then I launched, no, late 2016. And then I launched the brand in October, 2017. So it happened pretty quickly, but I just was so ready to start something new. And I just felt like it was time. Mm-hmm. You do move quickly. It's good. <laughs> That's how you get things done. Yes. No, our journeys have paralleled so much because it was right around the same time, end of 2016, that I started this podcast. Yep. I was thinking, oh, I think it's time to do a little something different. And like you said, blogs had changed a lot and we had both been blogging. And I really do miss, I miss those days so much of when yeah. blogs were blogs. And I remember when you said, I'm, I'm thinking about doing something new and then it launched. It has done incredibly well, mm-hmm. has been in Sephora since pretty much day one, right? Yeah. So it was so crazy because I launched with just like 11 shades of liquid lipstick and I was totally not looking to do Sephora or any retail. I was just fulfilling out of my little 3PL in San Diego and I was a one woman show. I didn't have a single employee. And it truly was just like a passion project to see where it went, but it was just like Suja, you know, like you start something and it's not like I set out to, you know, have this big makeup brand, but I just knew it felt really good at the time. I was so passionate about it. And I just followed that. So that was October. And then in December is when Sephora reached out and now they have that green clean seal on clean products that are clean at Sephora, but they hadn't launched that yet. And they were looking to do so in June of 2018. So they said, this was like December, 2017. And they said, we would love to meet with you. We're looking for like newer up and coming young clean brands. We're launching a clean seal and we're really looking to build up that category. So I went and met with them in San Francisco and we fell in love with each other. I thought that their team was incredible, obviously as a makeup brand. It's like, it's like if you're a, if you're a um, food brand, the Holy Grail would be launching Whole Foods. For me, it was like Sephora would have been the Holy Grail. So I was so excited. I let them know how small I was, that I had like no products. I had one skew with 11 shades and they were so supportive. They held my hand through the launch um, and they really partnered with me in a big way from day one. So um, I'm exclusive with them because um, they've just been incredible to me and I just love working with their team. So that's my only retailer. And it's been incredible. Since then, we've launched foundations, um, blushes, primer, lipsticks, lip liner, glosses, eyeshadow palettes. And I have a lot of really fun stuff coming this year, mm. but, um, it was, it was really great. Cause, um, I think it was a nice alignment that they were just launching clean and I was just getting into clean. And I think that they saw the same white space as I did. Mm-hmm. The timing again was timing. perfect because you kept it in your heart. Yes. Yeah. So do you have a favorite product in your line? Are you partial to the lipsticks? Are you partial to something else? <laughs> well, they're all like my babies. So I would say like, it's usually what I'm, what I'm working on at that moment because it just, I'm so passionate about it and I'm so excited for it. And I think the recent launch of Forget the Filler, which is our lip gloss, but it has this all clean 
dermatologic ingredient called Maxi Lip that actually is proven to increase your own collagen production by 351%. Wow. They've done like clinical studies. So, and I know the whole filler trend is such a big thing, but this is like a clean plumping gloss, but it actually like improves your own lips over time. It doesn't like sting when you apply it and then just make them plump because your lips are like on fire. Right. It's actually plumping. And it also increases your hyaluronic acid production. So that's really cool because it's one of those like products I just cannot put down. I feel a difference when I use it. So I'm obsessed with it right now. And then along with that, we launched lip liners and I'm like using four at a time because I just love contouring my lips right now because I'm so into that. But I would say from all of 2020 last year, my favorite collection was the baby collection because I was pregnant with Daisy. And so I created a little mini eyeshadow palette of all these like really feminine tones that when I found out she was a girl, I was just buying and everything pink and pink was just like my whole world at that time. So it has like really pretty reds and pinks and some purples. And it just like... I'll never forget that time in my life creating that palette when I was thinking about her and what her room would be like and what she would be like. And I was just so into baby girl things. So the colors really reflect that. I love that. And how do you pick the names of each product? I think that that would be so fun. It's so fun. Like that's one of my favorite things. And I still write all of the copies. So on all the boxes... Um, all the shade names, I write all of that. And that's one thing like I never want to let go of because I really do tie in whatever it was that inspired me. So it's really fun for me. It lets me be creative and imaginative because when I see, like when I we had our foundation line launch, I named them all like desert tones because I'm from Arizona. And all the times I would see these like, you know, really deep, rich, chocolatey colors so these really beautiful like tans and bronzes and goldens and then these really like light beiges it always reminded me of like different stones and sands and sunsets in the desert and so they were all desert names so that's kind of how I do it is really whatever it was that inspired me with that color story or that collection and it's super fun I love that. That is so amazing. Wow. So you said there's a lot of stuff coming out this year that you're excited about. Yeah, we have a few. So we just launched for 2021. We just launched the Forget the Filler Collection with the gloss and the lip liners. And then our next launch will be May. And it's a very highly anticipated, long-awaited launch. So I'm really excited to get it out. And I'm using it in every tutorial and I don't list the name and everyone wants to know what it is. Oh my God. But I can't say it yet. So I just use it and um, I just can't wait to be able to share it. It's like one of the hardest things I've ever formulated. Um, because a lot of the ingredients that go into this specific product are not clean. That's what makes a lot of these types of products so good. So cracking the code of making it amazing and on par par with like my conventional favorite without um, toxic ingredients was really difficult, but that is coming in May and I'm just so excited. Mm -hmm. And then we have, um, yeah, I think three more launches after that. So we've got a pretty stacked year. So exciting. So you said it was just you. When you launched, uh-huh. how do you have working with Lawless now? So now I have three full-time employees, which is crazy. I feel like I should have a lot more and I'm definitely working on building out the team this year. But we are a very tight crew and I've always um, thought quality over quantity. And I really like having great, um, you know, amazingly talented right-hand people. We really do feel like a family and especially during COVID when Um, the world's been so crazy and we've all had to communicate digitally on a daily basis. I feel like we've gotten so much closer. So I have Rachel, who's my president and she is like such a badass. She's a twin mom of four-year-old girls Mm -hmm. and she has a long history in beauty. She's been at L'Oreal. She worked with Bobby Brown. She worked with Pat McGrath. So she's had a long career in beauty, which has taught me a lot. And then my brother actually is my CFO. I so love I, that. Yeah. Oh God, that's amazing. He was, he was an investment banker for like five years. And then he, we were like at dinner one night in LA and I was about to drive back to San Diego. And I was just telling him about like the business and it was, it was really growing and launching with Sephora created so many, um, you know, bookkeeping and projection needs. And it was just like becoming a much bigger project. And he was saying how burned out he was starting to feel in investment banking and it's just such a grind. And so, um, it kind of just aligned that we were like, well, do you want to work together? So he came on board, um, as our director of finance. Now he's CFO and he does a lot of the operations. 
That's so mm-hmm. fun. Yeah, it's so fun. And then we have Ellie, who is um, kind of like a planner, and she really helps manage all of our shipments and inventory and all of the things that go into fulfilling Sephora orders and just managing um, mailers and all that kind of stuff. So she's incredible. Wow. I love that. I I know, but I love a small team. I'm the exact same way. And I can't speak from having a product business or anything, but to keep it tight and to really trust the the people that you're that you're instilling all of this responsibility yeah. to you and communicating with all the time. I love that. Yeah. And I think um it also like kind of stifles my creativity when there's too many hands in the pot. So I really like having just like an intimate team. I feel like I'm able to be more clear in what I need and want. And we do have like other agencies. We have a PR agency and like outsource things, but that's really our core team. And then I'm looking to bring on like a CMO. That'll probably be our next big hire. But yeah, we've been slow to build the team. I love that. Okay, CMO, people listening people are probably going to be like, <laughs> all my, oh my gosh. All my beauty CMOs, hit me up. Yes. Oh my God, what a good opportunity. <laughs> So cool. It's so cool if you found somebody here. So, <laughs> I know. I mean, I'd have to like give you a commission or something. Like, I mean, you're my I recruiter. Be so <laughs> I, that would be my first time ever being a recruiter. <laughs> Actually, no, I like connecting people. I you love, are. You're definitely a connector. For sure. So switching gears a little bit into away from the work life into family life, you and your husband, ever since I've known you, have been so in love, so happy together. What are all, What are your tips for people looking to find love and a happy marriage? Well, it's funny because I think we were, you and I were like seeing each other regularly when kind of around the time I met him. So I think you know sort of like that mm-hmm. whole story, but he, I met him because I was delivering juice at the time. This was back when it was a home delivery service and he ordered juice for me. And so I delivered it and that was how we met. And I had just broken up with Eric and we were still working together, but I was not looking to find anything. And my husband is 21 years older than me. So I definitely like had never dated anybody with that big of an age difference. So he just wasn't what I was looking for. It wasn't like I saw him and thought like, oh, that's a very likely match. Um, Cause we just couldn't have been more like in different places of our lives and stages. But um, we just clicked. We, we struck up a conversation and he was just so funny and kind and cool and smart and supportive. And I remember he would always just, you know, every time I would see or talk to him, he was always just like curious about the business and how I was doing and what I was up to and what my hobbies were. And I really liked his level of just like interest in me as a human. And so we talked for several months and finally we went on our first date and I had to really let go of like, and shed all of my thoughts about what my friends and family would think about dating someone that much older, obviously with two kids like all of these things that just were so not what I was looking for. I really had to like let that go and just be in the moment and see the connection for what it was. And that was really how the relationship grew. We became like best friends. And I think that's really the foundation. And that's what I would tell anyone is like, you know, don't go for the superficial, like quick flash in the pan things that attracts you to somebody when you're really looking for long-term love. You need to think about like, the things that truly matter in life. Like, is this person going to be there for me no matter what? Is this person a kind person? Are they a good person? Are they funny? You know, are they, are they able to solve conflict? Because t- times won't always be great. You're going to have fights and arguments. And how is that person when things aren't always rosy? Mm-hmm. And I think that was really what attracted me to him was just what a good, kind person he is. He's the same person every day when he wakes up. I don't have to ever wonder, like, you know, if he's going to be this way or that way, he's just so solid. And that was really, I think what I craved was that stability of just a great person. Yeah. That's amazing. You guys radiate love. So thank you. Of course. So did he want more kids or was he very much like happy? He has his two sons, your stepmom. He like, he's had an evolution. So when we first met, he told me he was never getting married again. And I didn't care at the time because I was like, I'm just dating this guy. I I don't care if he's going to get married. We probably won't get there. But six years later, he proposed. And I truly was at the point where I had accepted because he had said like very early on, I'm really not looking to get married again. I've done that. Now I just want to enjoy my life and have fun. And I 
uh, I kind of always knew there was going to be a time I was going to have to break up with him if I did want a family and kids, but I wasn't there yet either. So I was comfortable. And so it was the last thing I was expecting. And then at six years, he proposed. And I remember being so shocked. It was on my birthday and we were in Big Sur. And I like just did not expect it at all. I was sure this guy was like rooted in his belief. He didn't want to get married. And it turned out the reason he wanted to get married was because he after we had been together for so long, decided he did want to have kids together and he wanted to be married. So that was really an evolution. And it's funny how you just grow together. And sometimes you end up wanting things you didn't think you wanted when you fall in love. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. I remember that. I remember when when you started dating him and you're like, he doesn't want to get married again, but I'm totally fine with that for now. Yeah. People come so far. I they mean, come so far. And I think you just become does. family. And then it's like, well, uh, how would we not get married? Because we're like, so there's no life without each other. You exactly. Just it's like, of course we're going to get married because we're going to be together forever because I don't want to live without you. Yes. Love changes everything in a mm-hmm. person. I say that to Jonathan all the time because, you know, when I... So he and I were friends and friends for years before we ever went on a date or anything. And I always... that He was like just right in your backyard. You didn't even like realize it. So crazy because I was looking everywhere, everywhere else. (laughs) I remember a couple. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, you do. You totally do. I was... Yeah, I was looking. I was so just like seeking that deep love, having no idea that this best friend of mine was going to be that person for me. And, but I always joke with him, how much has love changed you? Because he's changed so much. He's gotten, he's vegan. He does plant medicine with me. Like we do the craziest things and have so much fun. But when we never thought he would be into. No, not at all. And he never thought he would be into. It's really amazing what love can do. That's how you like, um, bring, that's how you bring stuff to someone's life is like by expanding their horizons and opening their mind. And that's been my favorite part about finding a partner is like learning just about other things and opening my, you know, worldview and expanding the way that I think, because someone can kind of shake everything that you believed in up by just experiencing their point of view. And I think that's a beautiful thing. I think so too. We're so lucky. I'm so happy for you. So he was probably he was probably excited to have a girl after having oh, so excited. So he always wanted kids since we got married, but he always said, you know, whenever we think the time is right. And I think we were thinking like five to seven years. And so, like I said, I got surprise pregnant this past winter. And when I found out it was a girl, I think I took the first opportunity I could, which was at 10 weeks. It was like the 10 week, like heartbeat check, maybe, or no, the blood test that you take to find out if everything's okay. And um, I remember telling him and he was just like so freaking stoked. And he, it was just the cutest thing ever to see. And now that I see them together, I've gotten to experience him with his kids, but they're both boys and it's the sweetest thing ever. And I always was really attracted to him by what a good dad he is, but I've never been able to see him with like a little girl. And it's just been, I've like fallen in love with a whole new side of him. It's the coolest thing in the world to see their bond mm-hmm. and just like how caring he is. He's this like six one guy holding this tiny little baby girl and like, you know, putting her hair bows in it. It's just the cutest thing. So cute. It makes me so happy. You guys are literally so similar to my family in the sense that, you know, my mom, yes. my dad, he's a lot older than her. He has kids. He didn't want more kids. They had me. So I'm the daisy. I know you were like the straggler because I remember you said, yeah, I have like siblings, but they're so much older. So much older. So yeah. much, even older than I think your stepkids are older than, yeah, my mine are so much older, but all families are amazing in that way. And I got to have nieces and nephews when I was like six. So yeah. Daisy might have that. It's pretty cool. I know. It's so, I cannot wait to see her with other kids in our family because with COVID, she hasn't even been able to really like meet her cousins all all, like home. So when either if we have more kids or if my stepsons have kids, I'm just so excited to see her be like the little leader of the pack. I know. It'll be adorable. So everybody wants to know, what do you eat in a day? I'm sure it's different every day. So every day is really different for me. I would say, so I am vegan. I follow a fully plant-based diet, except for I do 
when I was pregnant, um, I worked with a nutritionist called the prenatal nutritionist. And there was a couple of things that I was just like really wanting to fill into my diet without eating animal products. Like I didn't really want to have eggs, but I really did want choline and I really wanted to get glycine, but I didn't want to eat meat. So I started doing collagen and fish oil for the DHA because it was more bioavailable to me. I was taking um, vitamin D supplements and uh, fish oil, but I was taking like plant-based algae and I still wasn't like absorbing it or something. My blood work wasn't changing. So I supplement with those still after pregnancy um, because I'm still breastfeeding. And that's been a great thing. So I'm really still eating plant-based. And in the morning, my go-to all winter has been oatmeal. Like I've been on a serious oatmeal kick, but the last four, three or four days, I've had a green smoothie and I'm kind of entering that summer phase. And I usually do that with like spinach, spirulina, um, whatever fruits I'm feeling, I've been like into this pineapple cherry situation, mm-hmm. but, um, sometimes I'll go simple banana, strawberry, and then I do hemp seeds, flax seeds, chia seeds, and a little bit of like almond butter, peanut butter. Yum. And then for lunch, I usually do like a salad, but it changes all the time. Like yesterday I had a ramen cup, like a gluten-free brown rice ramen cup. It's my Lotus foods. It's so good. But I usually do a salad with like um, sweet potato, lentils, black beans, sometimes tofu, tempeh. And then for dinner, I usually do like, that's usually my most substantial meal of the day. And I've been on a big burrito kick. So I've been doing burrito bowls. So I'm doing brown rice, black beans, pico, guac, and then like a bed of lettuce. Sometimes I'll do pasta. We love like brown rice pasta. And I'll do like lentil bolognese. But that's about it. I'm not a big snacker. So I usually do like three square meals a day. So I have like a little bit bigger meals, but I just feel like my digestion is better and my energy is better when I'm not snacking so much. So I usually do like a really, a really big dinner. And then I wake up and have breakfast about like nine ish. Love it. I pretty much eat the exact same way. (laughs) And you know, it's so funny. The last time we were seeing each other a lot, we were both eating a lot of meat. A lot yeah. of meat. We yeah. have changed so much. I know. And do you feel a lot better this way? You know what? I do, but I didn't feel terrible when I was eating meat, to be honest. I had the reason I went plant based, I went plant based um, last August. So it would have been August 2019 because I was driving up to LA for a meeting, a lunch meeting, and I got really sharp shooting pains on my left side. And I was like, this is bad. Maybe it's my period. I don't know what what it is. And my husband was in the car with me and he kept being like, should we turn around? We were like 20 minutes out of San Diego. And I was like, no, no, I'm sure I'm fine. It's probably my period. And as like the minutes passed, it was getting sharper and sharper. So I called the doctor and they were like, you might have appendicitis. You need to go to the ER. So I go to the ER and it turned out my intestine was twisted and they still don't know how that happens, but like it twisted. And so they had to do like emergency laparoscopic surgery to untwist it because if it stays twisted, it can like that portion of your intestine can die. And that's like a whole nother surgery where they have to rejoin it. So they untwisted it, but I had to eat really soft foods for like weeks so that I could, and like low fiber so I could digest easily. And one of the biggest things they said is no meat, nothing that's tough. You really want to stick with like soft, like over steamed potatoes, applesauce smoothies. And so after that, I was like, I not eat meat again. <laughs> I do not want to deal with that. I just want everything to be easily digested. Totally. So I didn't bring meat back or fish. And then I found out I was pregnant and I um, didn't bring fish back because it's a concern during pregnancy with mercury. Mm-hmm. And so I've stayed plant-based this throughout this time. So it's been a great thing, but um, I think that there's always like a season for everything, you know, like it, being plant-based feels really good right now. But back when I was eating meat, I didn't honestly, I didn't feel terrible, Um, but now it just doesn't, it doesn't resonate with me at this current time of my life, but who knows? Yeah. I feel the same way. So wild. So wild. Cause I think you were also vegan when you had Suja, right? Yes. And I was vegan back then. I remember yes, when you yeah, well, of course, yeah, not vegan, and it was, that a, was big a big deal. Freaking, no, <laughs> such a big deal. I don't think these days it would be such a big deal to people. I think it's more common now to know that yes, there's a season for everything. Yeah, and I think people put so much like concern and pressure and focus on what other people are doing, but like, what does it matter? To right. you? I know there's so many environmental concerns and all sorts of like really valid things, and you know, some animals are treated 
horrifically. And I, I completely think that being plant-based even for one day a week is, is so helpful to the environment and so great for animals. But I also think, you know, to judge someone else because of their diet, like it's just, it's heartbreaking when you see people get so judgmental and attack people Mm -hmm. for their personal choices, because everyone's kind of walking their own path and like has different needs. Um, and I think we should all just respect each other and do, do what we believe in and follow our, our personal path and just, you know, not worry about everybody else. And it, it's definitely, I remember when you were going through that and it's definitely changed, which is great to see. And I think there's still a lot more progress that can be so had, but it's nice to have that freedom to just, um, move, move throughout the different stages of your life and not feel guilty for it. Exactly. I love that. I love that so much. So I want to ask you some of the rapid fire questions that I ask everybody who comes on. So do you know your sun rising and moon signs? No. Well, so your sun sign would be your zodiac sign, which you're a Scorpio, right? I'm a Scorpio. I'm on the cusp. So I'm the 23rd. I'm like Libra Scorpio. Yeah, I can totally see that. So for your moon sign and your rising sign, do you know what time you were born? No. Okay, so if you figure it out, just send it to me later and I can look it up because then I'm we can totally also, going to. Yeah, we can also look up your I've human always design. wanted to know. We need to know. So your your moon sign, your rising, your human design, which I would love to know your human design. I'm really curious. There's five types. Have you heard of it? No. Okay, so it's it's similar to astrology, but it's it's basically your energy type in the world and there's okay. five different types. And so depending on which type you are, there's different strategies for relationships, for career, for basically the way that you exchange energy with the world. I would love to know this. I know. We need to know. So (laughs) send me later if you can figure out your birth time, which could be on your birth certificate. It is. It is my state. So I just have to find it. Okay, good. Because if I had to guess, I think you would maybe be a projector, which is there because there's two types that are considered non-energy types, which doesn't mean that you don't have energy. It just means that you replenish alone Mm -hmm. and kind of very true. More of an introspective personality. And like you had said earlier in the conversation, you kind of retreat when things are hard. I just think that you're a projector which would be the same as so many people that I love. I'm a reflector, which is that to the to the millionth degree, basically. Um, and then there's three other types. So oh I... Oh my God. Yeah. I'm like totally going to look at this. I know. Right. It's, it's really fun. So yeah, send that to me later. We can look it up. Um, where do you see yourself in five years? In five years, I see myself probably working on the same brand. I... I have so many dreams and goals for it. And every time I have a long-term or future thought, it's always including the brand. So I'll probably still be doing that. Maybe I'll have another baby um, and just being happy with my family. I just see a lot of family. Mm -hmm. I love that so much. Who is your inspiration? My inspiration is my grandma. She passed away, my mom's mom. But I feel like I've always looked up to her consistently throughout my life. And I have so many people that inspire me, but she's really the core from like the time I can remember of just the way that she carried herself and how classy she was and respectful of people. And I never heard her say anything bad about anybody. And a lot of those like really basic core values, I think I got from her. So I've always inspired her just because she was a really good person and like much better than I. (laughs) I love that. I love that. Coffee or tea? Coffee. Me too. Morning or night? Morning. What is your workout routine? It's walking with Daisy. That's it's gotten so simple, but I'm finding I really prefer low impact, like Mm non-stressful forms of exercise. So my big thing is long walks with her, and I do that almost every day. And I do a lot of like stretching and home yoga, but I like completely don't do any like intense cardio or any weights. I'm totally into low impact walking, hiking, yoga. I love that so much. If you had the chance to meet anybody in the world, who would you want to meet? Um, I would probably want to meet Oprah. I feel like she's just such a wealth of knowledge. And I actually just finished her book, What I Know For Sure. Mm. And I'm one of the last person in the world to read it. But I just feel like I would love to pick her brain and just like ask her questions 
um, and see how she would respond real time. So I know. such a good one. I haven't read her book, but I you definitely should. You should definitely read it. It just like has so many like positive affirmations and like really um, like beautiful messages about things she's learned throughout her life and career. And she's been through so much. And so I think it's a really uh, great thing everyone should read. Amazing. Um, so since this is the Soul on Fire podcast, what are your tips for people looking to set their soul on fire? We touched on this, but I think really following your passion. I don't think you you're fully alive and a, like awakened until you're living in accordance with what you're here for. And I think there's a purpose for all of us. And I think we spend our lives unlocking it and finding it. And I think we can take steps every day um, and listening to the little signs and following following the universe's messages that it's sending us. So really following your passions. And that doesn't just go with career or work. It goes for people. Only be with people that you're passionate about and that make you feel good. Um, Only think about things that you're passionate about and that make you feel good. I think it's really important to live your life that way. Such a good tip. I totally agree. And what's on the horizon for you? Well, we kind of talked about it. What's on the horizon for your business and life, but anything else? No, just keep going every day. I think the fun part about um, being on this journey is like, I don't really know what's next and I'm not really eager to to know. Every day it kind of reveals itself a little bit more and there's so much fun stuff I have slated for the brand this year and hopefully beyond. And who knows if we'll grow our family, but um, just continuing to be the best person I can be every day and the best mom, I think is my biggest focus right now. So beautiful. And where can everybody find you? Everybody can find me at my handle on Instagram, Annie Lawless. That's where like I'm most often um, on a daily basis over like YouTube or anything. I post makeup tutorials on IGTV and stories. And then you can find the brand at lawlesspd.com and obviously sephora.com. And who knows, maybe I'll relaunch my blog. Maybe we'll launch our yeah. blog and then they can find me there too. Let's do it. Honestly, I was thinking about that today because I still have my blog. I just don't update it very often, which makes me sad. So I, I think we should do it. Years. I know we should do like a full redesign together. Let's do it. I remember <laughs> the post. Yes. Well, let's do it. I remember the post you used to do about, is this healthy or not? Like, yes, healthy or not. Yeah, exactly. About like kombucha and hummus. And like, I literally think about that post of yours when I look at hummus in the grocery oh store. God. It What's comes this? into my head. I was exposed to so many food products when we launched Suja at Whole Foods. And I was like, there's so much consumer messaging around food that's like so discouraging. Like... Mm-hmm. People position products that are healthy that really aren't, that have really bad oils in them and like lots of fillers and just like really bad ingredients. Totally. And people think a hundred calorie pack or like an energy bar is healthy. But when you look at the back, there's like horrible things in some of those. So I thought that was really fun. I should bring that back. You should. You should. <laughs> okay, good. So we can all find you on the blog too. And yay. Thank you so much for coming on. This was so fun. So good to see your face. I missed you so much. And I really appreciate you taking the time to have me. All right, guys. Thank you so much for listening to this episode with Annie. It was so fun to have her on the show and catch up with her and hear all about motherhood, starting lawless, go down memory lane with her talking about Suja and blogging and our early days of our friendship where we really truly spent so much time together. And it was just such a joy to be in her light and chat with her for today's episode and to share her entrepreneurial journey and tips with all of you guys. It's my favorite, favorite thing to be able to do, to have these conversations and She's a true inspiration. So if you have not yet checked out her clean makeup over at Lawless, you've got to check it out. It's next level. I can't believe that it's completely clean, but it is. And if you've never tried Suja juices, Suja is amazing. My forever favorite is the Lemon Love. I drink a Lemon Love all the time. Love a Lemon Love. So head over to Instagram to give Annie a follow. Tell her if... She has to resume her blogging. And if I should resume my blogging, I think it's time. I think it's time for us to just blog more. It's so fun. It's behind the scenes. We can talk about anything. I don't see why not. And 
Um, thanks also to our sponsor for today's episode, Cured Nutrition. Cured Nutrition is the best CBD on the market. They are incredible. Use that code BLONDE. Try the mint tincture. Try the pain salve. Try the zen if you have trouble sleeping at night. Or the rise if you need a little boost of alertness. And use that code BLONDE for a discount. They're the best. Tag me on Instagram if you try. And then be sure to rate and review the show on iTunes. Send me a screenshot to jordanatthebalanceblonde.com. And I will send you my free yoga ebook as a gift and a thank you. And I will also enter you into this week's big wellness giveaway. We do one every week with all of my favorite brands. We've been doing it. We did. We started it in February. I decided to continue it through March because why not? It is so special to me to be able to offer you guys gifts from brands that I love. So my final, final thing is check out TBB Podcast on Instagram. We really revived the Instagram. It's a lot of fun. And another thing that I kind of recently revived is the Soul on Fire Podcast group on Facebook. So to join, head to Soul on Fire Podcast fam on Facebook. We've been talking all things 5D, fifth dimension, high vibrational amazingness. And it's just such a beautiful community. So head over there to chat and get connected with people from all over the world. And with that, I'm wishing everybody a very happy Wednesday. I hope you liked this week's bonus episode two with my lawyer, Grant. That one was really fun. Highly recommend checking it out if you are an entrepreneur or a small business owner or just business owner in general. Okay, that's all for now. Sending you so much love and we'll talk soon.